Well, <laughs> that works. Bit of an angle, let's try and get that a little bit better. Well, who would have thought it? So hi everybody, just thought I would give this a go for doing some cooking. Steve bought me uh, a stand that holds uh, the phone. Not a revelation, it's also got a light on the back of it. But I just thought it would give you a bit of an angle, a different angle today and we could have a natter. I've just been out for a run and I guess if anything from this crazy COVID-19, one thing that we can be sure of is that we've got a bit more time on our hands. Unless you're frontline workers um, in some way, then a lot of us might be furloughed or if you're self-employed, you might be out of work as such, unless you're getting involved with other projects. Um, I'm one of those people. So I've been cooking at home a lot and I, I love cooking. I'm a passionate chef. I never took it up as a living when I trained when I was younger, but obviously I've had a background in hospitality for 30 years. So to be able to get stuck in to the kitchen is something exciting. This morning, I thought I would do a sort of omelette with a twist. So I'm just gonna get a few ingredients together. I've already got some red pepper, some cherry tomatoes, some spring onions, Now I'm reaching for the ham. I've got some ham that I picked up from Aldi and also some more fresh peppers. Then I'm gonna get my chopping board and I'm gonna get a few things out that I'm gonna need to do, um, to do this. So basically I'm gonna cook an omelette in the oven. Ha <laughs> ha! It's not a revelation, but I'm gonna show you how I'll do it. So I've also got these. Uh, we've got an olive oil with garlic and we've got an olive oil with chilli. So let's just give those a little shake over there. So I'm just going to use that. A, it's going to add some really intense flavour. Chilli in the morning is really good for you um, because obviously chilli speeds up the metabolism. It's a bit like a drug to our body uh, and chilli will just generally get you working quicker, thinking quicker. I'm also gonna put, because I can, a bit of salt. And that's sea salt. Sea salt is the best one for you. And some black pepper, like so. So I give them a good sprinkle. Now I'm gonna get my sharp knife, and my slightly longer one, and I'm gonna chop up some stuff to go on it, uh, to go on the base of this tray. The red pepper that I've already washed and done a little with, so we're literally just gonna slice it up like so. Uh, feel free to interact this morning. It's always great to connect, and I can see many names. Les Frampton coming up, Abby Lewis, uh, Graham Brogdon. Have you finished dogging? Oh, Graham Brogdon, what are you like? Uh, but I did have a really, really good run. And I've gotta say, if none of you uh, jog or run and want to take it up, um, the From Couch to 5K app, where you can choose your mentor, and in particular I've chosen Joe Wiley as mine, is a really incredible app. It's very motivating. Um, you can get to play your music at the same time. It dips in and out of Joe Wiley telling you when to start, when to stop, etc. And I do want to get fitter. So if there's anything that comes from this COVID-19 malarkey, it's the fact that I want to come out the other end fitter and ready to do more exciting things. And of course, one of the great things with fitness is it opens the door to so many other things that you can do, whether it be, you know, whether you're a passionate person and you want to go to the gym, whether you want to go running, whether you want to go cycling, whether you just want to be able to do more active things like uh, get your kit off when you're on holiday and show your body off to the world. Might help you pull a little bit more. Um, maybe you just want to feel a bit more confident about your body. And that's, and that's the great thing about getting fitter. I haven't felt that confident about my body for a long time. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I've put on weight. I love eating food and I do like the odd glass of champagne or a cocktail and it throws pounds 
on you. You know, all, why is it that all the really, really good things often throw that extra weight onto you? So, um, so one of the things I want to do is get fit, but also I'm at the age where <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be. And you know that, that old cliche phrase, we all get older every day. We're not as young as we were yesterday and so on and so forth. And if I don't start now, I might be, uh, I might have gone past the zone to keep myself fit. I've never been really unfit, but I can be fitter. And when you know that in your own peace of mind, it's important to do something about it because if you just sit there in your couch, watching Netflix, eating shit, you're never going to feel any better for it, are you? And, and you're never going to uh, come out the other end. So for me, COVID-19 is a great opportunity to sort my shit out and get myself sorted, really. Get my body fitter, um, feel better about myself and have a whole m much more positive lifestyle ahead. Wow, so you can smell that now. So I've just put that oil over there. I just want to line the bottom of that tray. So I just put it in the oven, which I'd already turned on. So I just want to line the bottom of the tray. I could probably do with a, just a little bit more oil on there. And you can smell the garlic coming through. Who has garlic in the morning? Me. Uh, the same with the chili as well. Hopefully what this will also do is stop our ingredients sticking to the bottom of the tray as well because we want this oven based omelette to lift quite freely off here but we want everything to cook nicely so it's a bit like making a quiche <laughs> for all the gays out there I don't know why we're normally related to as being the ones that are good at making a quiche and it often pops up on a lot of comedy things um, but I don't, have I ever made a quiche? Um, now I've just said that. I don't know if I've ever made a quiche in my life at all. Corey Hadley, good morning to you, my beautiful school friend. Obviously, we was at school 20 years ago together, wasn't we? Uh, and for anybody watching now, Corey did a live set last week where she raised over £800 for the NHS. It was incredible. Uh, no, picture is reversed. See logo. What logo? Oh, on my shirt. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if there's a way of turning that picture around. Can you turn the picture around? No idea. Um, anyway, I'm still me each side. So does it matter that much? Just don't read anything that I've got on me. Hang on, I just need to freshen me tomatoes. There we are. They're nice and fresh. So I just thought I would... Steve bought me this stand. It took forever because he doesn't want to hold the camera anymore and it took forever to arrive um, but I have had it here for a couple of weeks and not really used it particularly when I'm cooking here because when I'm doing the meals of a night time to get the close-ups and things like that it's better to have somebody that can do that for you because this is static but I'm only cooking up like an oven omelette so for us to be able to chat and interact it's great uh, someone asking if you're left-handed. <laughs> oh, right, okay, I get it now. Uh, no, I'm not left-handed. I am a bit ambidextrous, but it depends on the occasion, I guess. Um, you know, whether it's yourself or somebody else. So I've chopped up some mixed peppers, red, yellow, green here. We've got some tomatoes. I've got the ham ready. I'm going to put those peppers back in there. I'm just going to get... Uh, I've got this lovely bunch of spring onion. I'm just going to take one out because I don't want to overload it with onion today. I'll pop the peppers and the onion back in the fridge. Slide that in. We're going to get a block of cheese out and I'm also going to get some white mushroom out as well. So we've got some cheese and some white mushroom. Let's Reach for the greater. Da, 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 da. Reach for the greater. I'm going to get some mushrooms. Here they are. So I've just gone for uh, the good old closed cup mushrooms here. And I'm just going to pop that back in the oven for a moment. Just to get some heat around it. We'll get these closed cup mushrooms. We're just going to put those into thin slices. And I'll show you why they're thin slices shortly. 
So uh, it's great. To, it's great that I can read everybody's messages as well. So thank you for taking the time. I went out. The sun was shining beautifully earlier, which you know, it's a bit like this uh, during this crisis. Being locked in, we appreciate freedom a lot more. So uh, when it was raining for most of the week, <laughs> it's great to have the sunshine back, isn't it? So uh, I've, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get out and have a run today because I didn't go out whilst it was cold and windy. I'm not a big fan of Gale Ford. Sorry, that was just somebody trying to give me a call, Paul Cadman, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go for a cycle uh, a little later on as well because I've got a little bit of catching up to do. And also for me, I guess if I wanna lose this, it's cardio, I've really gotta turn up the heat on. So subsequently, to get two cardio sessions in a day is really gonna keep my metabolism going. I'm no fitness guru, I'm no expert, but I know what I've seen over the years. Uh, and I take on board the feedback. Uh, I've met with different gym instructors, I've seen different things on TV. Corey, I'm on my cycle. Ah, uh, uh, I can't believe you just wrote that. You are just, oh my gosh. Some things and some people Never change. I love you just the way you are, except for that bit. <laughs> yeah, I knew before you even wrote that word, I knew where you was going with that. Gross, absolutely gross. <laughs> I know it's a natural thing and all that. Right, I'm just gonna throw these mushrooms. Actually, I need to take my ham out. So this is, look at this, look. This is amazing ham. I know it's probably written backwards on your screen. I'm gonna just see if there's a way of turning that screen around. I've never done it before. Choose how to go live. Mystery mask, oh, mystery mask. No, that's not what I want. Uh, no, I can't see how you, if anybody knows how to turn the screen back the other way around so it's not reading backwards, please do let me know. Uh, so I'm gonna, so this is, uh, I bought this from Aldi the other day. Great big pack of ham uh, and very little cost. So I'm just gonna take four slices, four slices of ham. I'm just gonna drop it on that tray. Before anybody says I'm mixing, meats and veg on here. It's all going in there, so it makes no goddamn difference in the slightest on this, on this occasion, on this occasion. Uh, and also, I haven't got the space. I'm still waiting for my lovely friend, Sarah Law, to get me my kitchen centerpiece once lockdown is over. So I can't wait for it to be over, so I've got some space to be able to show you things. Right, let's put these back in the oven. Fridge. <laughs> I just called the fridge the oven, but last night I called the oven the fridge. This is what you get from crazy lockdown syndrome. I just need to freshen my hands because obviously what I've done there was touch the ham and now I'm gonna touch some cheese. And I don't wanna cross contaminate that way. So you still don't wanna cross contaminate. And I'm just gonna grate here. <laughs> Probably looks a little bit naughty, doesn't it? But I am leaning forward to grate on the grater with my very little bit of space that we've got. And I know before anybody says, cheese is probably not the healthiest thing when I'm trying to get fit. But the fact is, if I start exercise, I'm doing exercise, which I haven't been doing before. So already I'm, I'm making a difference to my body. Then I'm trying to turn up the gear by doing a run and a cycle in the same day or every other day. So that's extra as well. And of course, I don't know if you knew that if you exercise during uh, the day and then you exercise again the next day and then again the next day, each day your metabolism builds up in the sense that it burns a little bit more and burns a little bit more because you keep it going. And you, as you keep it going, you add a little bit more of what it keeps burning off each day. which is a great bit of knowledge. Right, okay, so we've got this. Now I need some eggs. So um, I'm gonna use four eggs on this occasion. So we're just gonna uh, snap away. There's one. These are large eggs as well. But because we're gonna fill the whole base of this tray and there's two of us eating, then four eggs is, is, they are big eggs. Not quite like an ostrich, but they are big eggs. There they are, look. 
it's all in there. I do like this though, because it does mean I can use two hands. Normally when Steve stays in bed and I'm doing breakfast in the morning, it's very difficult to be able to use, uh, to be able to do stuff with one hand whilst you're holding the phone. So it's great. So I'm just gonna take the outer leaves off this bit of onion here. Put that in the bin over there. Just gonna take the end off the onion as well. And I like to, the great thing about this is I just like to get everything ready so that I can just throw it all in, it'll be ready then. What's the phrase? Perfect preparation prevents fill in the blanks. Tracy Bedford, good morning to you, my lovely friend. Sorry that I missed the friends live call on Facebook last night where everybody got together. Uh, I was feeling a little bit under the weather last night, everyone, so I put myself to bed early. Steve was insistent and kept waking me up to watch um, Jeff getting his just deserves. Did anybody watch Coronation Street last night? And that nasty bully, Jeff. And anybody who knows me knows that I've got no time for bullies at all. Um, they, they deserve no place around us, uh, especially around nice people. I experienced bullies while I was up north and um, it's just not people that I give the time of day for really. Uh, and neither should anybody. So to watch Jeff last night getting his uh, just deserves was great. Uh, I think she did go a little bit far with the with a bottle in the side of the neck. I'm not condoning that in the slightest. Um, and, and actually, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know she was going to go that far. I thought she was going to bash him a bit like the old Arthur Fowler, bash him around the head with a frying pan or something. But no, she uh, she really stuck the knife in, well, stuck the bottle in, didn't she? Um, but I'm sure there was a lot of people out there, and especially women or men, that might have been in the same situation over the years um, that were happy to see that happen. Right, okay, so. I'm going to beat my eggs. Here they are. So the whole thing about beating your eggs is to get as much air in there as possible. And we want the air because we want the omelette to lift. I haven't got a whisk, although we don't want to whisk them up too much, we just want to get the air in there. Now I'm going to do two more things with mine. Why? Because I can. Reese Baden, morning to you, my friend. How are you? I do miss seeing you and your lovely humour. We need to have a catch up. There's so many people I've said we need to have a catch up with. I'm going to be smashed for the whole of the time that we come out of lockdown, I think, unless we drink coffee or tea. There we are. I think we've got a fair bit of air in there. So I'm just going to do two more things. I'm gonna be a little bit cheeky, and I'm gonna add a little bit of sour cream. Why? Because I like the uh, extra flavor that this gives. I've only added a bit, just probably a big heat teaspoon worth. I'm gonna eat the rest, like so. And then we're also gonna add some skimmed milk. bit more. So to me, now we've got all of our ingredients to make this tasty omelette this morning. So I live in Birmingham city centre, which many of you may know, and to go out for a run this morning, I've run around St Philip's Cathedral, spelt the same way as my name, uh, and ran there, and then I've run up by the fountain, uh, and I've done some of the circuit twice in certain parts, because the thing is, when you do a run, you don't have to run four miles, you can run miles within an area, you can just create yourself a circuit in the city. And Birmingham is very quiet at the moment, so for me that's great. There's lots to look at, around by the cathedral, there's lots of grass, um, and it's quite pretty around there. And also up by um, Centenary Square is also very lovely, and they've got the fountains up there now, which is great. So to have a little run around your own city, and to see how pretty it is, 
whilst getting some exercise, while listening to Joe Wiley in your ear, telling you what a good job you're doing, um, not in a condescending way, as she also points out to you, um, is, is lovely. So I'm just gonna cut this ham into pieces. You can tear it if you want to. Um, but I'm just cutting it into pieces so that'll be easier to sprinkle onto the dish. I'm just gonna help do a bit of ready work while I'm just waiting for that tray to heat up on the bottom again. Law Beach, how are you, my lovely Mitch Granshaw? Hello to you all the way up in Leeds. Um, yeah. So what are you all doing with your day today? Obviously, it's a brand new day. It's a Saturday, um, or Saturday, uh, and you know, there's, there's lots to do. You can read, you can go for your exercise, you might be going to work if you're a person in the forces or front line in some way. Hospital staff. Have you had breakfast yet? Am I inspiring you to make a sexy omelette? A sexy omelette, woo woo! Uh, so I'm just gonna reach for the oven. Take out that tray. Then, oh shit. And now here's the oil look. So I've put this lovely chili olive oil and also some garlic olive oil on there as well to create that base. Olive oil's good because it's not too bad for the heart. And now I'm just gonna put over a bit of a base, which seems to be running down to one side, which says to me that my pan, uh, my base isn't very level. And the oil is exactly what I wanted it to do. Stop it from sticking. Yes, that's all right. So when I've got it in the oven, it's leveled out. So I'm just gonna use that to create that baseline of the egg mix on there, the omelet mix to cook over. So when I say it's an omelet, I am a little bit of a fibber because it's like an omelet cake because what I'm gonna do is, is the egg's gonna cook on there and then I'm gonna use these ingredients to put over the top, think like a pizza. So I'm gonna use that to top the rest of it, and then we're gonna cook it in the oven, and we'll just dish it up in portions. We don't want that scraggy bit of onion there. So I don't see much interaction going on this morning. I've had a couple of hellos, but there's lots of people tuned in already, so feel free to, uh, any questions that you've got, anything that you'd like to ask me? Um, obviously, I've been out for my run this morning, and I just want to get some energy for going out on the bike a little bit later. I haven't been on the bike for a few days because I didn't realise what a pain in the ass it would be. <laughs> and I mean that in the literal sense. It was it, it was really, really sore on the bum. I even bought one of those padded seats. Oh, thanks for the love art. Uh, I even bought one of those padded seats. Um, but gosh, we cycled 11 mile one day. That was only the fourth day we'd had the bikes and um, it, it was even difficult to sit down on the sofa over there. Uh, Joe, morning to you. Tom, Bob, Bob Hennigan, hello. Good morning to you, my friend. Right, okay, so that omelette base is cooking a little bit there. I'll show you what that'll look like just as that cooks up a little bit more. Uh, we've pretty much got everything to go on now. The only thing that I am worried about is the egg might not go far enough. What I might do is throw another egg in there. And the great thing about this, so we've used five eggs, but even if you don't eat all of this, you can always save some for later on, which you can have on its own, or you can have it in a salad. There you are, and we just whisk. We just want the air in the egg. And of course, if you make an omelette, because how the egg binds everything together, to make it stretch, just add a bit of milk. And if you add a bit of milk to it, it will just go that little bit further to stretch over everything that you need it to. So I'm launching a new show later on next week, which I'm gonna be doing online. I've got uh, quite a few different guests already. So if anybody knows of any guests that you'd like me to introduce in uh, or to interview as well, then, uh, and, and if you've got contacts to them, 
then feel free to drop me a line. Um, and I mean all sorts, as long as they're interesting and stimulating. You know, there can be chefs, there can be DJs, there can be pop stars. Um, it can be somebody of a, an interesting background. It could be a, a, a frontline worker. As long as they've got passion and energy. Uh, Reese, I'd love to interview you. Laura, I'd love to interview you as well. I think you both do great professions um, and have got beautiful minds. And of course, you know, it's always great to share somebody's beautiful mind because life is all about you and me and sharing that interaction of the of the minds and uh, I just find minds fascinating um, the good ones are the better ones but I've met quite a few crazy people over the years and just to see how their minds tick is always really interesting Chris Evans morning to you John Paul Chad Lewis good morning to you my friend nice to see you the only thing when you cook something in the oven is it takes a little bit longer doesn't it? So I'm hoping the base of that tray should be heating up quite nicely now and cooking that egg. Yep, I can see that. So I'm just going to whip it back out. It doesn't need to be cooked through. What I wanted to do was just put a base on so you can see that there now. And then I'm going to do something like this. The harder stuff, I just want to sit on the bottom. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to sprinkle the peppers over because we want the heat to come through the bottom a little bit more and of course the, the tray being metal it will heat up from the bottom a lot more and then gonna do the same with the onion as well Just sprinkle that over there and that's the spring onion that I finely chopped to go over the top then the mushrooms of course it's great to have a bit of mushroom and this is why we chopped it thinly because we just want that to cook in the oven nicely like so, spread them over. Then I'm gonna put the tomatoes on. So it's literally, it's like, it's like an omelet cake. It's like an omelet layer cake, isn't it? Great film. No, film's not called omelet layer cake. It's called layer cake. Great film. And then I'm just gonna get the ham. And we're just gonna sprinkle that over break it up a bit while we uh, put it over because it came from four slices that we've cut into squares like such am i making anybody hungry yet it made you want to get up and eat and what what will you be eating i know we're coming towards lunch time but this will last right through until i cook this evening uh and i might do i haven't decided if i'm going to do a joint of pork or some fresh fish later so i'm just going to get this now the egg mix again the omelet mix and I'm just gonna pull that over the top. And then I'm just gonna get this grated cheese that we did as well. And I'm just gonna share that over the top as well. Can't beat a bit of cheese on a, in an omelet. And as I said, I'm doing an oven omelet today, if you've just joined me. What's an oven omelet? What it says on the tin. It's basically omelette mix, layered and put into the oven to cook instead of in a pan. And that will puff up nicely, a bit like a quiche, but no pastry um, and a few different ingredients on there. And now that's, that's just gonna cook away. So I actually envisage that taking maybe 15 minutes in the oven. Chad Lewis, morning you, yes, starving. <laughs> uh, well, maybe when all this is over, Chad, we'll, um, we'll have something to eat. How's that? I haven't seen you in ages as well. So it's always good to catch up, isn't it? I'm just heading over to the sink to freshen my hands. Again, it's interesting, isn't it? Because COVID-19, coronavirus, all they keep saying to us on TV is wash your hands wash your hands, don't touch your face, those sort of things. And it's interesting that one of the biggest industries to be affected in a negative light is the hospitality industry. Um, bars, restaurants, anything to do with food and drink where, the, where people congregate. The interesting thing about that is that 
We're the ones that have said for years and years and years, wash your hands. You have to wash your hands in between everything. You're touching food, you're touching dirty glasses maybe, dirty plates. Uh, you, we are constantly washing our hands and you're not to touch your face. You have to tie your hair back if you've got long hair or put a net beard on, etc., etc. So all the things that um, we're being told by the government right now, most people in hospitality are like, we've been doing this for years. So um, hopefully the rest of the country and the rest of the world catches on and realises it's important to wash your hands and not cross-contaminate and spread food germs as well as other germs around. Ash, call you shortly, Phil, when you finish your live. <laughs> OK, mate, I will look forward to that. I'm really looking forward to having a catch up with you, actually, and uh, sharing some ideas. Uh, Sybil, morning, kid. Try it as a souffle. It's lush. Oh, oh, that sounds nice. I love a good souffle as well. Yeah, so I guess this is a cross between a souffle and um, a quiche and an omelette. There you are. There's nothing. There's nothing original about me. I'm nice to. I like to mix things up a little bit. The question is, what do I serve it with? Do we have it neat, or shall I do it with? Uh, I don't know. I could do it with some beans, couldn't I? Or we could do it with some avocado. Actually, I'll let you decide. Shall I do it with? some avocado or shall I do it with some nice beans on the side I do like beans I'm a cheeky bean eater um, yeah my mind's now racing thinking actually what will what do I fancy having with that um, but my taste buds are going I'm hungry because I've had that jog and I, I'm grateful that you take the time to interact here and I hope that you'll see the difference I make to myself as I start to jog a little bit more and to get the bike exercise as well salad salad hmm it this is sort of breakfast or brunch so i guess yeah you can have it with some salad i don't think i've got any salad well i've got tomatoes but i put tomatoes in there i've got uh i haven't got any leaves actually i've got cabbage but that's not quite the same is it I was reading an article yesterday, if the whole world washed their hands and were more hygienic, one million people would not die. Wow, that's an interesting article. Thanks for that, Ash. One million people would not die. Yeah, you know, hygiene's a really interesting thing. Obviously, I've seen, I've seen quite a few comments and actually somebody sent me one of those memes. That's a brunch has to have champagne. I completely agree, but I haven't got any champagne. Um, which is really weird because I said to Steve the other day, I said, should we get some champagne in? And then we were like, oh no, we, we won't get any champagne for the moment. We'll get some later on. We're trying to cut down on the alcohol intake. Although we did come back with about eight bottles of wine. But the thing with wine is that you can have a glass here and there and even a good bottle of red can last up to three days. Um, obviously it's not as best as when you first open it, but you can get a good three days at a bottle of red before it starts to go a little bit queer um <laughs> that's per year oh per year right okay yeah sorry i was thinking of the champagne then um I, ash i'll tell you what we'll definitely crack open a bottle of champagne when all this is over and we get together because i know we will be getting together um but yeah I'll, we'll have to have some champagne um and actually at some point we'll have to go on holiday thailand or something like that the four boys out partying would be uh, would be good fun hang on i'm gonna look to the fridge to see what I can serve up. So I have got, I've got an avocado in the fridge, which is beautiful, it feels fresh. Maybe getting a little bit soft at the top, so that's on the turn. Let's have a look at this inside. Oh wow, that is rising perfectly now. And for anybody who watches me cook, when I'm doing things like ah oh, yes lovely when i'm when i'm doing things like vegetables um one of the things i try to do with vegetables is fruit and veg is take some of the crispness out of it so it's not too hard but i still want it to have a bit of a bite a bit of a bite to it so that you've still got a lot of that natural goodness so i like to get the heat to go through it but i like a bit of bite to it and I always think that's the amazing thing so you know like you relate to I don't want to disrespect anybody I'll relate to my past when my nan used to overcook 
everything and everything came out quite soft. You'd have like soft carrots or soft cabbage or everything was, oh, I don't mean really soft, but I mean it was what I would relate to now was probably overcooked. <laughs> Gosh, did I say such a thing? Um, but obviously a lot of grandparents used to do that. You might still have parents or, or family members that do that, but obviously all the goodness of your veg that you cook is in that bite and that crunch you haven't cooked out the juices all the freshness of it is still in there which is why it's really good to have an al dente veg i know some people don't like hard foods some people don't like hot drinks which i always find really interesting um and you like things how you like them but obviously when you're doing food if you make that effort to cook something fresh you want to get the best out of it you want to get the best flavor you want to get the goodness out of it and you want to make it be good for you so the whole thing about doing this this morning omelette eggs obviously help to build you up uh, not saying i want to be a muscle mary but the other thing is the, the veg that's gone into there uh, i know will be really good and full of nutrients each day i take some multivitamins because we have a vitamin d deficiency in this country um, and i take some other ones that are good for the brain and the circulation as well and I just like to think that they may help me in some way I don't think I'm looking too bad besides got a little bit fatter like a puffer fish my nan could make all different veg look like mashed potato <laughs> that's that's it but it is, it, it is a big nan thing they used to overcook them because many years ago they were taught that to uh, for it to be healthy and for it to be edible, you had to cook it for a, a long time to cook out a, any sort of, I guess, badness out of it to make sure it's cooked properly. But I also guess, you know, for, for grandparents that came through the war, etc., um, they might have had to use produce, produce that had been sat around for a while and they couldn't get their hands on uh, fruit and veg and maybe meats and things as well, so regular. So they would cook it extra to make sure that it had, it had been heated up properly to stop any bacteria and badness coming through. Now we're in a much better position, even during lockdown now. I think, gosh, when my grandparents, the stories they told me about being for the war and air raid alarms and different things like that, running for cover as bombs were dropping down. Uh, uh, but they didn't have any of this tech you know, computers and televisions and, and phones to be able to keep in touch. So they just have to get on with it. We're fortunate, we've got a lockdown, but we're able to communicate. So this isn't cooked yet, but let me just show you how this is rising now. Look at that. So we're getting that lovely color on it. I'm gonna get a spatula just to show you underneath. Here it is. And um, we'll see if we can get underneath. It might still be a little bit soft. And in this case, it's sticking to the bottom of, oh uh, yeah, it has stuck to the bottom a little bit. But let me just show you. All right, hang on, I'm gonna have to, this is an angle I haven't done before. So that's just cooking underneath. It's not quite cooked how I would like it yet, but it is nice and soft. And that will finish perfectly once finished. I love your videos, Phil. Always so happy. <laughs> Thanks, Hannah. That's really lovely of you. And thank you to everybody else that's making the effort to uh, feedback, interact. Uh, feel free to share them. I'm always happy for you to, to share my videos and definitely getting involved. I don't think I'm going to do the avocado. Um, I'm going to do beans. Uh, so I'm going to get out a tin of beans, which is in the cupboard behind you that you can't see. I've got beans. Oh, did I buy beans the other day? Right, I've got some beans. I'm gonna open up this tin of beans. I'm gonna do something really naughty, but actually it's modern technology. I'm gonna pop the pinger in the microwave. There we are, that's going down there. I'm gonna add into the beans a little spray of barbecue sauce. And that's it. We're gonna keep it nice and simple in the microwave. I'm gonna put them in for one minute in the microwave and then when it gets to one minute, I'm gonna give them a good stir around and then we'll pop them in for another minute and that should uh, have them heated right through. Adam Millabon, you do cheer me up. I must say, miss you and hope you're well. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Adam. Great to see you on here as well. And 
the lovely thing is when I get messages from people, it just reminds me that you're doing well and you've got the opportunity to watch this video and tune in. And I'm very grateful of that because uh, it's just nice to know that your friends are keeping safe and well. These are Aldi beans. Oh no, they're not. These are Sainsbury's beans. Did I buy some beans from Aldi the other day? I'm sure I did. But, you know, some people say Heinz are the only beans, but um, it appears not. Beans are beans, aren't they? You know, I, I try and go for the ones with a little less salt and sugar in. The same as this. So I bought this the other day from Aldi. I know it reads the other way around, but 50% less salt and sugar. And it's a 650 gram. Do you know how much that was? 75 pence. 75 pence. Right, I'm just heading for the oven again. And when I say the oven, <laughs> the microwave oven. I'm just gonna give those a quick mix. You're gonna get that barbecue sauce mixed in there as well. And then this time when I put them back in the oven, microwave oven, uh, I'm gonna put two plates in there because I want the plates to be warm for when they're served. Uh, I also want to, oh, I've got no bread. I was gonna say I want to cook. Oh, that is really rising up now. So I'm just gonna put those back in, bear with me. One moment, in fact, I can do this, can't I, look? I can turn it to wherever I go. So we're gonna go over to the microwave oven. <coughs> Sorry, I did say two plates to go in with it. Like so. Puffed your thing for one minute. And we're gonna support this with two, not one, but two. I feel like Paul Daniels. You'll like this, not a lot. Uh, and I'm gonna put these two crumpets in. So we can serve that up with a crumpet. So we've got a little bit of bread. On there, I'm not a big bread fan. Oh, I love bread actually, but it just doesn't like me very much. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a little bit of bread in there just to give it a bit of extra sustenance, although we've got the egg, but I know Steve will definitely want some bread with it. I'm gonna pop the kettle on so that we can have another cup of positivity in the morning and everybody likes a cup of positivity. What do you think of all the uh, fridge magnets over there? There's a collection of different places I've been all over the world and they have other meanings as well. And then my cooker hob, which is just above, this is hanging off it, uh, is full of fridge magnets. And I love it because they're colorful, they give a taste of our life and the things that we've experienced. My beans are cooked, crumpets are in, omelette's almost done. Let's have a look actually of, of how this omelette is looking right now. So I'm just gonna pull that out. And this is what I call an oven omelette. Look at that. Okay, still not quite cooked enough for me because I want that just to be going golden brown on the bottom. You know, I was in the Stranglers, golden brown, texture like sun. That's how I want the base of this uh, oven omelette to be. So kettle's boiling, beans are in, crumpets are crumpeting away as they do. What's that? As you all know by now, Lurpak, my favorite butter. Um, for anything that comes out the oven, goes in the toaster. I love Lurpak. Jacket potato, a crunchy jacket potato with Lurpak butter just is oozing out of it. It's just delicious, isn't it? It's beautiful on the palate. Titillates those taste buds. Ah, and uh, it just really helps enhance. I guess if you're gonna do anything right, choose the right products that work for you. Lure pack. Somebody wrote, Ali Terence Sonari said the other day, uh, Phil, you could be a great advert for Lure Pack Butter because you're always giving it a plug. I don't mind. It's a childhood thing as well. I grew up with Lure Pack. We talk about um, cooking for the family and things. I grew up with my parents, my mum using Lure Pack all the time while I was younger. And I remember some of my friends 
families used to have like, respectfully, cheap margarines and things. Um, and it tasted awful. And it, that taught me from an early age, you know, pick the right products for you. That's how I word it. We've all got unique taste buds and we all like what we like. After this lockdown, I want an invite for lunch. Rennie Miller. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, you and Reese. Um, and we'll see if, if somebody else can join us. But uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, you can come around for lunch. And of course, this is my home lock. So this is my lounge and dining area. This is a bit weird using this. <laughs> uh, right, okay, so. Crumpets almost cook. I do like my crumpets to be quite crunchy. Uh, Renny, uh, you can come round for dinner or lunch, whatever you want, but you have to bring either the fruit juice or the bubbly, not Prosecco. Oh, can't stick Prosecco, worst thing ever invented. Uh, but of course you might like it, it might work for your taste buds. Um, but whatever the bubbles may be. I quite like a nice uh, demi-sec carver. Um, I, I do quite like carver. I know I've mixed, <laughs> mixed French and Spanish together there, but I do like a nice um, medium dry carver, not too dry. Um, anyway, right, so crumpets cooked, toast, beans are cooked. Just give them beans another 30 seconds. I'm gonna put the plates here and then we're gonna serve up very shortly this beautiful omelette mix. So let's just turn this back around. So you've got, can you see what I'm doing here? I'll pull that plate forward, right, okay. So I'm just gonna butter up these two crumpets now and then we'll pull our mix. That butter doesn't wanna go on there, does it? Come on, get on there. So we're just gonna put that lovely, tasty Lurpat butter on those juicy crumpets that have got a nice crispness to them. And I love it because when you crisp them up a little bit more, the great thing about them is because they're soft on the inside, you get this double texture. And I always talk about getting the best out of textures. You get this double texture of crisp on the outside and then the softness on the inside. So you get a crunch and I love that. In fact, I'll see if I can show you. I'll have a bite of my one. I don't normally eat my mouth full, I wanted you to hear the crunch. Could you hear that crunch? Deal, deal, done. You can always win my heart over with good friendship and bubbles. So uh, I'll look forward to that. Right, okay, so this is gonna be cooked. So here we are, it's what I call my oven omelette. Look at that. So I'm sorry if you're all at home and you're thinking, gosh, I really wanna try that now. It's made me really, really hungry. So this is a breakfast oven omelette. Uh, and in there, if you remember, I layered the bottom of the tray with this. Some olive oil garlic you can get from most good shops and some olive oil chili. I know it's reading backwards, but olive oil garlic and olive oil chili. I drizzled that over this tray. And then uh, I put it in the oven for a moment just to heat up so we could spread it around the tray a little bit more. Uh, then I mixed up the eggs and I put some of the egg mix on the base just to create a bit more of a firm base. Uh, and then I chopped up some mixed peppers, red, yellow and green. Uh, some cherry tomatoes because they've got real intense bursting flavour there. Uh, we chopped up some honey roast ham that I bought from Aldi and we chopped it up into squares. Um, have I missed out an ingredient? Oh yeah, we thinly sliced some mushrooms and we thinly sliced them so they were cooked better on this tray in the oven. And I also finely chopped some spring onion to put in there. We didn't want to overpair it with the onion. We want all those flavours to burst through and that onion will give a nice little edge to that. And then we sprinkled over, uh, then we poured over the rest of the mix uh, and then we sprinkled over some grated mature cheddar cheese. We've done these two crumpets in the oven, and then I put half, just over half a tin of beans with some uh, a squirt of barbecue sauce in, just to give those beans a bit of a different edge. You could also add some chopped sausage or bacon into that if you want, which would 
make it almost cowboy beans. <laughs> um, but we've just gone for a simple bit of barbecue just to give a different edge on those beans. So now I'm just going to portion this up. I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this because I know Steve will be hungry when he gets up. It's only thin. Um, so I'm just gonna try and take it out in two slabs. Now it will have stuck to the bottom a little bit, but that is coming apart all right, actually. So let's just see if I can show you this. The only thing is my spatula's not big enough to get it all out, so I'm gonna have to do it in portions. So here it is. That's how it looks. You can see the heat's coming off that. It's puffed up nicely as well. And I'm just gonna put that down onto there. I'm gonna do the same with this piece. And it just scoops out nicely. Because we've used that oil on the bottom, not only is that gonna give it a beautiful flavor at the bottom of that egg, when you cut through and you taste all those different healthy veg that's in there, you're also gonna get the beautiful flavor from that chili and garlic. Not too overpowering, but it will certainly give an exciting edge to your dish. So I'm just gonna push that back there. I'm not fussed about it breaking apart because the thing is, we're going to eat it. And the great thing about food, yes, you can make it look really, really presentable, maybe if it was an evening dinner, but this is for breakfast. So look, same again, I'm going to scoop under. I've cut this into four squares, they're not too thick. Serve that on this plate here, so you can see it going down. I'll, I'll, same again. It's that lovely square portion going on there. I've never put crumpets in the oven. Good idea, sounds crunchy. I actually didn't put them in the oven, but you can put them in the oven, Rene. I actually put them in the toaster, but I, I just, when they said it was cooked, I just pushed them back down and cooked them a little bit more. You, but you can cook them in the oven. It'll, it'll take longer in the oven because you haven't got the direct, um, you haven't got the heat so close to them, but it depends on how hot your oven is and how, and how long you've got. But, Crumpets in the oven will be delicious as well. And to get that lovely crunch, which is what we're aiming for. So just look at that look. So I managed to get Steve's out looking a little bit tidier. There you are, this is gonna, this is gonna be quite a hearty breakfast. Let's just turn, we've turned all that off. Oh wow. Okay, so we're just gonna finish the plate now with those barbecue beans. So I'm just going to bring these forward. I'm gonna tilt that down so you can see it a little bit more. So now we're just gonna decorate with these barbecue beans. I'm gonna give them a stir. I'm gonna pour them slightly over that crumpet. And the same again, obviously I took a bite out of mine if anybody's wondering what's happening there. There we have it, so. There we have an oven baked omelette with all of those beautiful vegetables in, those nutrients, those tomatoes, mushroom, mixed peppers, uh, three times more vitamin C than oranges. Uh, we've got the rich cherry tomatoes in there bursting with flavor, a bit of spring onion, that beautiful honey roast ham, plenty of protein in there. We've got the beans, plenty of protein again with a bit of barbecue and that extra crisp. That extra crisp. What do you call it? I forgot the name of it. Crumpy, that extra crisp crumpy. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut into this. I wasn't gonna do it, but I am gonna cut into it and let you see me taste it. So let's grab that and that. So I'm just gonna cut into this beautiful omelet. We've got the onion, the tomatoes. We're gonna get a bit of ham on there. We've got some mushroom, we've got some pepper in there. Look at that. Mm. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Bursting with flavour, fresh, 
healthy, tasty, won't be too heavy for the day, but most of all, uh, it will give you that get up and go and boost one's immune system with all those lovely vitamins because we haven't overcooked them. We've just made something very tasty there. I'm going to have breakfast now before it goes cold. Uh, great to interact with you. I love to hear your feedback. Uh, if you want to write any other comments once I've gone off, please do, uh, as long as they're nice. And I'll look forward to interacting with you again soon. Love you all loads. Keep safe and well. And um, thank you for supporting. All right. Speak to you soon. Bye.